Keep the Aspidistra Flying is a very popular story, but prior to me watching it, I didn't actually know very much about George Orwell's tale and what it was actually about. But then I sat down to watch it and thought, this narrative really appeals to me. And, you know, thank goodness Helena Bonham Carter is in this. Otherwise, I may never have actually gone around to seeing it. This was released in 1997, directed by Robert Bierman, written by Alan Plater and, of course, George Orwell. And is also known as A Merry War. I think that might have been its international title release. But definitely keep the Aspidist for flying in the UK. And this stars Helena Bonham Carter and Richard E. Grant as uh, Rosemary and Gordon Comstock. Uh, we also have Jim Carter in this and a whole cast of you know, really, really entertaining people. Really well cast. But, you know, for me, obviously, um, Helena Bonham Carter was the main pull factor. And if she wasn't in it, probably never would have got around to seeing it. Would that have been a big loss? To an extent, the narrative is something that really appeals to me. So I'll read the description from my MDB. But I have to say, the execution of the narrative wasn't as enjoyable as I had perhaps thought it would be. So the description from IMDb is as follows. Gordon Comstock quits his job as an advertising agent at an advertising agency in order to write poetry, only to find that poets, like everyone else, need money. Now, me being a writer, I love, I love films about writers, and especially films that deal with flailing writers and writers with no money and the fact that this is set in 1930s uh, in 1930s London gives us some beautiful fashion beautiful scenery that's definitely one of my favorite time periods for novels uh, or for fiction and I kind of feel like the book the book for this would be better for me with what I was looking for um, I haven't obviously read the book if you've read it and you like it, let me know. It's currently 35 pence on Kindle from Amazon. So I'll definitely make a point of getting that as soon as possible, um, by which I mean probably later today. But if you've read it and you know how it compares, um, try and be spoiler free, but do let me know. So in terms of the narrative, you know, it's good. It's engaging. I think it's, it's reasonably well told, as I said, can't compare it to the novel, but just viewing it as a film on its own, it's, it's interesting enough. Uh, Gordon as a protagonist uh, is fine. I think he's quite likeable. Richard Grant obviously does a great job with his character, and I like the portrayal of him. I think his attitude is pretty realistic for the situation he finds himself in, and certainly as a poet, um, I think he embodies the core characteristics of a of a typical poet in the 1930s. That worked very well for me. Rosemary, HPC. Love her, love her costumes. Uh, she tends, I can't even think of a single film where HBC doesn't have just the most beautiful costumes. But this is certainly no exception to that. And I think the on screen chemistry between the two, between Richard E. Grant and, and Helena Bonham Carter, is, is beautiful. And there are no complaints from me there. So, really, there's nothing about this film that I think is bad. You know, the acting's great, the casting's great, chemistry, you know, the set designs, the scenery, costumes are so beautiful. The premise and certain parts of the execution of the narrative for what I was looking for, I think where it lets itself down is that it just doesn't really capture my emotions. You know, I don't find it, you know, it's a comedy drama, I don't find it laugh out loud funny, I don't find it overly dramatic. I'm not that emotionally invested in it. So I'm thinking I'll probably prefer the novel because I'm, you know, I, I, I love reading, of course, and the language of the 1930s, very different to a contemporary novel now, um, is something I enjoy losing myself in and becoming absorbed in that. Not that the language in this film doesn't feel realistic for the time, but I prefer to read um, books set in the 30s compared to the actual films. So I do recommend it. I, I do think Keep the Aspidist or Flying is not one of HBC's better known films, but I'd say certainly visually it's it's one of, well, I don't know, is it visually one of the more beautiful? She's done so many gorgeous films. I think you'll like it regardless. And it's not that hard to get hold of. DVD's pretty readily available. 
a, a, an enjoyable watch, one I would watch again. In fact, I'm probably going to get the novel, read the novel, and then watch the film again and see how it compares eventually. Not my favourite HBC, but still beautiful with some really gorgeous costumes. I really like Rosemary as a character, and, and Gordon's interesting enough. Pretty happy to recommend this one.